Tessa Smith from mamasgeeky.com. Hi, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So this last, I was going to say year, but we're at 18 months now, <laughs> has been pretty insane and crazy. So I'm curious what parenting challenges you've had to deal with during the pandemic, like maybe virtual schooling and other stuff like that. Yeah, that was rough for me. Turns out I'm terrible at that job. Um, that was that was a real shocker. And one that I just would not, uh, I couldn't quite accept until my nine-year-old daughter was like, mom, you have to stop. You're not explaining anything to me. I'm not learning anything. And I was just like so defeated. But um, that was definitely a challenge. And the rest of it, I would have to say, was a little bit of a blessing, you know, just having that much time with my family, which I normally wouldn't have, was something that I was hyper aware of, even though they were driving me crazy at times. I was like, listen, you're never you're like, when is the next time you're going to spend this much time with like, enjoy this. Next, we're going to go to Amy Fulcher from asthebunnyhops.com. Hello, I'm so excited to talk to you today. Hi. And I'm wondering, how are you able to relate your parenting style to the character of Morticia? Do you have anything in common with her? Oh, man, I wish I was as cool as she is. I, I In my head, I imagine myself as just being that cool. But I am constantly reminded by my kids that that I'm not. Uh, she just does, she seems to just always kind of have the same temperament, no matter what, how upset she gets or anything like that. And I'm not that good at hiding that. But I think we have one thing in common, and that is maybe something that I took from my mom as a parent. My mom never placated to me as a kid. And so the first time I saw a parent kind of like googly talk to their kids, I had this like vision in my head of the kid inside their head going like, what are you doing? Like, why are you speaking to me in this weird voice? Like, I just heard you talk to that person and you didn't sound like that. And I do appreciate that about Morticia. She speaks to her children in a way that she speaks to, you know, obviously subject matter, we should always be kid appropriate or age appropriate. But this tone thing that we do with kids, I don't know, I have this comedy in my head always where I hear the kid just going like, what are you doing? Why are you pulling that face? <laughs> and uh, I don't do that as a parent. I think when I do, my kids are really weirded out. <laughs> Next, we're gonna to go to Nicole Mucci from multiculturalmaven.com. Hey there, how are you? Hi, Hi I'm good. <laughs> Thanks. I was curious, um, I, we know that you were an executive producer on the first animated film. And so I was just curious if for this one, you had some input about the relationship that Morticia has with Wednesday and your similarity with you know being a parent and, you know, with life as it is being a parent. Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely a conversation that I always love having with the director and, and Conrad in this case was really um, very, he's, he was just very well, uh, he would articulate very well to all of us what the ultimate outcome he wanted this to be. And so having a clear understanding of that helps you not kind of fill in maybe some gaps for yourself or, or, or kind of like add on to what is already there. Um, it just, I think the second time around too, we all kind of like knew what each other, we, what, what everybody was doing. Whereas in the first one, I was like, I wonder what, what Chloe is doing. Like, you know, like you just have no concept. And this time around, we all kind of like knew what we were, what, what we do and how we could have more fun with that. Next up. We're going to go to Rachel Berry from prettybabyfood.com. Hi, hello. Hi. So excited. I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Morticia is such an iconic character. I mean, you know, she's been around since the 1930s. Um, what drew you to her role for the first movie? And what do you hope parents and kids will take away or learn from this movie? I think the the biggest reason why I wanted to be a part of this movie was because of my two girls. I, you know, I tend to make movies that they won't see until they're 52. So, uh, and I think you all would agree because it sounds to me like you all write mommy magazines or my, okay. So moms want to have, they want to impress their kids and it's the hardest thing. Your kids are just never impressed by you, no matter what. 
And this was one of the first things that I've done where I, even though they don't want to show me, I can tell that they're pretty chuffed that their mom is playing Morticia. And as a mother, that is really, I mean, deep down inside, like no Oscar can kind of replace that feeling. So that was really my, my joy. And then to work on something where the, the core theme of the story is all about celebrating difference and how we all are, our family, the shape our family takes, the things our family likes, uh, what we look like, that, that there is no one mold for that. And that there's a real celebratory notion to this family being even stranger and weirder and kookier than, than they could be and still have that core of what a family value we all can relate to, which is love, right? They all love each other so incredibly deeply. Next, we're gonna to go to Tati Pradilla from coolmomscooltips.com. I love these, you guys have such good titles. Like, I love it. <laughs> Thank you, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for, for spending some time with us. Um, it got real, very fast for me when Gomez said, um, no more personal devices during this trip. So I was curious if there were moments like that that you experienced with your children or, and at the same time, Morticia was kind of more laid back than he was regarding that. Where does Morticia and Charlize um, cross paths in terms of parenting styles? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think she's much, much cooler in her, uh, just the way she can kind of keep it together. I think that, there's a little bit of Gomez in me as a mother and there's a little bit of Morticia in me as a mother. There's definitely a part of me, even though my kids are not going through adolescence yet, but I can see glimpses of it, right? The kind of pushing you away and them trying to find their own thing. And it's like, mom, I don't want you to be a part of this. And you're deep down inside, you're just like crushed, but feeling like Gomez, like what can I do and doing all the wrong things? Like just, you know, to kind of like insert yourself into their lives. and. And then at times I feel like I take the role of Morticia, which is like, listen, like stop complaining and putting all these rules down, like just enjoy the moment for what it is, because you're wasting all this time, like trying to like hold strong to your rules and what you said before, and you're missing the moment. So just like, it's okay. Next, we're going to go back to Tessa Smith. Hi again. So one of the things I love about this, because I can totally relate, is family vacations. Things always go wrong. So I'm curious if you have any story about a family vacation where maybe something crazy happened, like happened with the Adamses. Well, we just took a, a road trip um, a couple of months, oh, a month, like right before school started. We, we, um, we drove out to Yosemite and uh, my mom came with us and the one thing I didn't quite fully, it was, this is really the first like full road trip for that long that I've done with the girls, because I just felt like prior to that, we'd done like two, three hour trips. And even that with them, it was just like, you don't really get a lot out of them. They're sleeping and they're on their iPads. And this was the first one that I was like, oh, like, this is a longer trip. You guys are older now. We're going to talk about things. And we listened to the same Katy Perry song for like four hours. And so I, I now have a whole new rule. Like we have to have a clear deciding moment of like how much time you get on the radio and then the other people need a turn as well. Um, but in saying all of that, you know, towards the end of the trip, I think it just like broke them down. So we actually had some conversations that I don't think we would have ever had if we just flew there, you know, that it took about five hours to get to that place, but I, it was worth it to, just to be able to have these conversations with them. Next, we're gonna go back to Amanda Taylor. Hi, so one of the lines in the film was, um, touch my heart was, uh, when they, once they said, you know, he may not be my biological father, but he's still my, you know, they're still my family. So I just wondered, you know, what you, how you felt having this movie kind of parallel your life so closely. Yeah, I mean, even there's a broader um, uh, uh, theme, thematic theme for me, because a lot of like my family, who I've accepted into my life as my family, um, are most of them adopted. I've adopted them, they've adopted me. And so it made 
adoption for me, it's a no brainer for me. And it might not be that for other people and that's fine. And I think being honest as to like how you wanna be a parent and going about it that way, that that's everybody's choice. And I, I, I highly recommend that because raising kids, that's hard and you should do it the way it makes sense for you. So for me, it was never a second choice. Adoption was always the first choice for me. And I think for a lot of people, that's like a tough, like they can't quite wrap their heads around that, but I know other moms like that. So I know I'm not the only one out there, but I just always knew I would adopt. Even when I was eight years old, I wrote my mom a letter because I was an only child and I, and she framed this letter for me when I adopted my first kid. And she said, at eight years old, you were already asking to adopt a sibling. You never asked me to have another baby. You asked me to adopt a sibling for you. I'm getting emotional. But that was how connected I was to adoption. And so I always knew that that was how I would want to have my children. We have time, we have time for one more question. Amy Fulcher. Uh, I was wondering what your inspiration is when you're selecting your roles. What inspired you specifically to take on the role of Morticia? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, like I said before, definitely for my kids, like I found something that I thought was a really strong story and one worth telling and, uh, and I knew my kids would really dig it. And I think I also had, you know, this very vivid memory of watching Angelica Houston play this role in the 90s and like just being like, wow, that's amazing. So it was intimidating, but also exciting to kind of know that I could play off that a little bit. Um, and then finding inspiration in the material that I actually had, right, which was different. This was more family based and figuring out who she could be in this world for families today. 